Okay. Show me. Hi there guys, welcome back to the Dutch Sheet channel and I have me a box. Yes sir, and I'm happy to uh, have this box because uh, first of all it's an XK product yeah, and if you are familiar with my channel you know that I like that brand. I've reviewed a lot of XK products and usually, well, more times than not, they work out well and they generally look good. Second reason is that I hope that this will be an excellent beginner FPV quadcopter. I've flown it a few times, it flies very nice, I'm not ready with the review as of the recording of this segment of the, the video though. So during the course of this video I hope to be able to tell you if this X130 is a very good beginner FPV quadcopter. Maybe you are uh, looking for uh, something to get into FPV flying with and that's what I selected this quadcopter for. I'll first tell you uh, why I selected this one, then I'll show you the ins and outs of this quadcopter and obviously we'll fly it as well and then I'll give you my uh, closing thoughts on this XK X130T. T? I'm not sure what the T is for. Uh, whatever. Okay, let's see what is in this box. Alright, believe it or not, the box contains a quadcopter. Yes, no surprise there. And um, uh, let me see. Yeah, at the front of the quadcopter, you can see a lens over here with a lens cover. You can see this uh, antenna over here, which is the antenna which will relay the FPV footage to you. And it's a um, ready to fly in a literal sense. You don't have to do any uh, configuring uh, with this quadcopter. And um, let me actually uh, put the specifications for you on screen right now. You can obviously pause the video if you want a closer look at those specifications. Now, uh, while we are looking at this quadcopter and the specifications, uh, let me tell you why I think. This could be, if it flies well, if it performs well, could be a, a very good, uh, excellent beginner FPV quadcopter. Uh, first of all, it's uh, not a brushless quadcopter, which is definitely not what you want as, as a first uh, FPV quadcopter. Uh, you don't do your driving uh, lessons in a Ferrari, right? Uh, you want something that won't hurt you or your friends or your uh, your dog. Uh, this is a brushed quadcopter, not overly powerful. So if you uh, fly into something or someone, yeah, it won't end in tears, so to speak. Uh, second thing, uh, I already mentioned that uh, you don't have to do any configuration uh, things with this quadcopter. You don't know, need to uh, dig into Betaflight or another firmware like that with uh, a lot of par parameters. You take this quadcopter out of the box and you are uh, ready to fly. Well, you obviously need to charge the flight lipo and that's it. No special knowledge required to get into FPV flying. After a while I can uh, imagine that you will want to get into that, but again, as a first taste of FPV flying this is excellent I think, in my opinion of course. And um, is there more? Uh, yeah, um, it has training wheels so to speak, this quadcopter. It can fly uh, fully stabilized, meaning that if you let go of the sticks the quadcopter will self-level itself, it won't keep on flying in the direction it had at that moment. You let go of the sticks and it'll auto-level. You can, and uh, that's another reason why I selected this one, however um, jettison <laughs> uh, those training wheels. You can fly this quadcopter in acro mode. And if, in case you don't know what that is yet, um, acro mode uh, basically means that if you have the quadcopter angled forwards, backwards, sideways. It'll uh, keep that angle until you correct it yourself. So basically in, uh, in uh, acro mode 
you don't have those training wheels, those aids anymore. Again, I think that if you are uh, starting out in FPV flying, it's handy to have training wheels, but be able to uh, uninstall those training wheels as well. And um, obviously if uh, you are flying in acro mode, you can also do flips and rolls and stuff. I'll show that in this video as well. And it's uh, also very simple. I'll show that in a minute. It's very simple to uh, uninstall, uh, disengage those training wheels. Okay, so a brushed quadcopter. And a lot of brushed quadcopters are slightly smaller than this one. This is a 130 size quadcopter, meaning that from this motor center to this motor center, this distance is 13 centimeters. A lot of uh, brushed quadcopters like this are slightly smaller, approximately in the sub 100 range. Okay, and it does have a uh, carbon fiber frame though. It's, I'm not sure how thick it is, one and a half millimeters I think. Uh, so not super th uh, thick, however the arms are pretty wide as you can hopefully see. Is there flex in it? Yeah, there's, there's a little bit of flex, but it's, it's pretty stiff. It has uh, more rigidity than I'm used to. Uh, in quads like uh, like this one. And let me see, yeah, it has this uh, clover leaf antenna at the top. You don't need to know what that is, but again, it'll relay your FPV signal to your uh, to your uh, goggle, for instance, or your screen. Um, it is a bit exposed over here, right? However, this quadcopter is pretty light, so yeah, uh, crashes won't have a lot of impact. So. If for instance you do most of your flying uh, over grass, this won't be much of a problem. It's also a little sturdier than I'm used to. Maybe a little better alloy used over here, I'm, I'm not sure, but it feels a little sturdier. Okay, at the front we uh, have an FPV camera. Um, it is a CMOS camera. Um, in a few minutes we'll see what the quality is like. I haven't tried it myself, but again we'll see what kind of footage uh, this camera shoots. And at the bottom we've got ourselves a LiPo. And what kind of LiPo is this? This is a 700 milliamp 1S LiPo ending in a micro low C connector. Which is nice, there's uh, heaps of LiPos available with this kind of connector, so getting yourself some uh, extra ones shouldn't be a problem at all. And let me see, yeah, it has an integrated flight controller and receiver, a proprietary receiver, and we'll have a look at the transmitter that comes with this uh, quadcopter in a minute. And that's about it. Oh yeah, it does have uh, LEDs at the bottom. These green boards at the bottom of the arms are LED boards. Um, I could have done without those, to be honest, but they do serve a purpose. Actually, let me show you what the purpose of those uh, is. Okay, I have dimmed the lights a little, so you can see the light from the LEDs. And I have the radio over here. Now, the front LEDs are always green, as you can hopefully see. The rear LEDs are now blue, however, now they are red. Huh? Yeah, if you press down on this stick, the right stick, those LEDs will change color. Now they are blue, and that shows you in what mode you are flying. Now it's in uh, outer level mode, so training wheels on. If I press down on this stick, they turn red, as you can see. Now the quadcopter is in uh, acro mode, so training wheels off. And with that we have arrived at the transmitter that comes with the X130. This is a uh, well-known uh, controller from XK. They basically have two lines of controllers, the smaller ones like these and the slightly bigger ones that come with well, larger quadcopters and some planes. 
Um, if you, by the way, have such a transmitter like an X6 or an X7, you can use those with this quadcopter. It has a bind button and um, yeah, so. However, these radios, the smaller ones, are okay. They, um, they do perfectly fine. I have no problem using these transmitters at all. I actually do have an X7 transmitter, but I'll fly the quadcopter with this transmitter. Now, um, on off switch over here. As you can see, it has a backlit screen. Uh, the backlight has uh, shut down now. But, um, well, it shows you the trim levels, but you don't really need to use the trims. Um, it shows... Um, well, actually, in this case, it doesn't show a whole lot. I have an XK plane with the same transmitter. In that case it shows you that it's in high and low rates. Well, it actually does. If you press down on the left stick, you switch from low to high rates. Now it's in 70% rate. I hope that you can see that. Now it's at 100% rate. And again with this right stick, if you press down on it, you switch from acro mode to outer level mode. And that's that's it. Um, apart from that, obviously you do <laughs> you do your flying with these sticks. And it has two extra buttons, uh, but in this model they are not used. Which also means that uh, you don't have auto flips with this X130. Which is perfectly fine. This is, quadcopter is a step up from your uh, toy grade entry level quadcopters, right? You might have uh, uh, flown those indoors, the ones that cost uh, 30 euros all in. Uh, this is a step up, it doesn't uh, do out the flips, you'll have to do the flips yourself, which is, which is fine. And what more can I tell you? Um, yeah, it takes four double A's, this transmitter, and uh, that's basically all you need to get flying. The quadcopter comes with a charger, battery and everything else. Uh, you, if you want a FPV fly, you do also need an, uh, a goggle, of course. I'll uh, actually show you an, uh, the goggle I'll be using in a minute. Alright, the quadcopter also comes with a manual. Uh, not uh, a huge manual, but it uh, does tell you what you need to know. Spare parts are listed in the manual and it's in uh, English and Chinese. And it's actually proper English. So the manual is just fine. Alrighty, the quadcopter comes with a uh, USB charger. And it's actually a dual charger as you can see. So if you get yourself a second uh, battery, you can charge both of them at the same time. So that's very nice and you simply hook it up to a, a USB power source, your computer, laptop uh, or anything. Alright, the last two things in the box were uh, these prop cards with little tiny screws. Um, I won't be using them but it's nice that they provide you with prop cards, uh, especially if you want to fly this quadcopter indoors. That can sure be handy. A set, a full set of spare propellers and a screwdriver and you'll need that screwdriver to install the prop guards. Okay, as mentioned, the goggle I'll be using. This is the Aomwe Commander and um, this is not a super duper cheap uh, FV goggle. However, I did want to mention it because it's a very good FV uh, goggle. Uh, yeah, it does co <laughs> actually cost more than this uh, quadcopter. However, if you'd uh, opt to get this goggle, you'd be basically set for years. I will also be reviewing this goggle. I, I am in the process of re uh, my long term review of this uh, goggle, but I love it. It has one downside, not a huge downside, but it does have one downside. It's a bit precise um, in the positioning on your head. Uh, so your uh, eyes really have to be lined up correctly uh, to be able to uh, uh, see the image well. Uh, it's a minor downside and that's the only downside I've come across so far. From all the goggles that have built-in receivers, this one has a, a dual diversity receiver, 
Um, this one is very good. Actually, the, the best I've seen from goggles that have built-in receivers. Okay, so much for the goggle I'll be using. Let's do some flying with this uh, quadcopter. Uh, with this quadcopter. Um, we'll first do a line of sight flight. And after that we'll do some FPV flying and as mentioned before after that we'll come back to the studio and I'll give you my uh, closing thoughts on this quadcopter if it's actually uh, a good beginner quadcopter. So here we go. Alright guys, maiden outdoors flight for the XKX130. Let's see how it does. There is a little bit of a wind. So let's see if it can actually cope with that. It being a brushed quadcopter, it doesn't seem that all, uh, affected by the wind at all actually. I am in low rates at the moment. It, uh, the radio always uh, starts in uh, low rates. And I have not done any calibration at all. So looks like that's not really necessary. Yeah, uh, it, <laughs> it's a drizzly, uh, misty day as you can probably tell. Um, that's what <laughs> the weather is like uh, in this time of year over here. Okay, uh, let me see. Your rate? Uh, the your rate is actually adequate. I'm not sure if it's affected by the rates. Let's try the higher rates. Am I in high rates? Now I'm in high rates. No, the, the your rate doesn't seem affected by the rates. Obviously the bank, left and right, front and back, is affected. Quite substantially actually. I have a far easier time fighting the wind in high rates. So that's good. Um, the weather being as drizzly as it is, uh, does probably make it possible for you to see the LEDs at the bottom. I hope so at least. And yeah, it's, it's a, a very stable quadcopter. Uh, especially uh, for me, uh, I'm an uh, experienced pilot of course, so for me it's easy to fly. I did have to get used to the throttle feel a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's an, a very easy quadcopter to fly. It sounds smooth. Uh, no issues at all uh, so far. Let's try a punch. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so obviously it's not a brushless quadcopter, right? <laughs> For a brushed quadcopter, the punch was uh, as expected, really. And let me see. Yeah, the, the temperature is uh, close to freezing. So that will definitely adversely affect the flight time. Lipos uh, never really like cold weather. Um, I'll actually uh, put the total flight time of this flight on screen for you right now. I have no idea what the flight time will be. But uh, yeah, it's a uh, very well behaved quadcopter. Fun to fly. Uh, even for uh, someone that's um, used to far faster quadcopters. Having said that, I generally like any kind of RC, so oh well. Yeah, it flies very, very well. I am looking forward to FPV flying uh, the quadcopter, uh, which we will be doing in a minute. Actually, uh, let me uh, fast forward the rest of this here flight, because I don't want to have this uh, video drag on for hours, of course. 
So um, we'll cut, or well, fast forward to my FPV flight. Uh, that FPV flight will not be narrated, I think. Maybe I'll add some narration uh, after after the fact. And after that, we'll get back to the studio for my closing thoughts on this XK X130.
So, what is my take on this XKX130? Has XK Innovations made another nice RC? First thing, uh, most, like I said in the beginning of this video, I like the looks of most uh, XK products. This one, yeah, um, function over form, I think. Uh, so it, it doesn't look spectacular, uh, yeah, maybe the one with the white canopy, there's a version with the white canopy, maybe that one looks better. It's not of huge importance, but it's, it's not a super duper uh, slick looking quadcopter. And now that I uh, am mentioning gripes, <laughs> gripes, one other gripe I had is that the propellers come off uh, in crashes. Uh, not in flight and uh, they don't get uh, loose after a lot of crashes. I've had a lot of crashes with this quadcopter, yes. Um, so uh, somehow I have been able to find the propellers again every time so far. So this is still my first set of propellers. Uh, but uh, again in a crash they do tend to come off. Uh, maybe that's better than uh, the propellers uh, breaking. Um, yeah, but it's uh, a bit annoying. Yeah. So, and um, one uh, very big plus of this quadcopter, to me at least, is that you can angle the camera up and, uh, and down a little. But I hope you can see that I've got mine angled up a little. Oops, like so. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's visible. But you can angle the camera up. And you don't see that a lot in quadcopters in this class. Mo most of them have a, a fixed camera angle. And uh, yeah, very uh, nice that you can angle the camera up a little. So have they made a perfect beginner FPV quadcopter with this XK X130? Well, no. No quadcopter is perfect, Mr. Dutch RC. So, um, this one isn't either. Like I said, my major gripe is then propellers coming off. Other than that, I think this makes for an excellent um, entry into FEV quadcopters. If you uh, want to have a taste of that, I think this is a good option. Uh, as mentioned before, most quadcopters in this uh, kind, in this class, either have a beta flight flight controller, in those you can obviously transition from auto level into acro mode, but yeah, you'll have that hurdle of getting to used to, or getting to know beta flight. Uh, with this one you don't have that obstacle in your way. Uh, and, and still you can transition from auto level flight, training wheels on, uh, for all the way to acro mode flying and that's uh, a very good thing I think. Um, you, If you want to get into FEV flying you'll have to get into acro flying as soon as possible in my opinion. The longer you put that off, the longer you stay in outer level mode, the harder it will be to transition into acro mode. And eventually you will want to get into acro mode. So. Again, this quadcopter makes that uh, very easy. Just one click of this stick over here and you're in acro mode. Uh, to that I do have to add, the, the FPV flight you saw a minute ago was in outer level mode. It was simply too windy uh, for me to fly in acro mode. Uh, the quadcopter is quite touchy in acro mode, which is a good thing. Uh, you have a lot of control, but uh, yeah, you don't want uh, stormy weather. Uh, you don't want a lot of wind like I had in my uh, FPV flight. I did manage to do a couple of uh, acro FPV flights, but I didn't record those, sorry. <laughs> but uh, well, again, um, yeah, I think it's a major plus bonus feature of this XAX130 that you can actually switch into acro mode. Um, actually, if you do, that might be a tip. If you get this quadcopter and you want to transition into acro mode, you might want to switch back to low rage. In that uh, case uh, the quadcopter will be a, less, a bit less uh, uh, touchy. So, yeah. 
Okay, so uh, yeah, um, I'm happy with the quadcopter. It flies great, especially uh, its outer level uh, flying. Um, apparently, they done uh, they've done their tuning well. Uh, flawless. It's uh, a fun to fly. Um, for me, I'm obviously uh, accustomed or uh, used to higher quality FV cameras, CCD cameras. This one has a CMOS camera, typical for this kind of quadcopter. So uh, yes, I am used to higher quality in my FPV feeds. However, uh, like you saw in my FPV flight, the reception was good. So it do the, the transmission this quadcopter uh, provides is uh, good. And as always, that DVR capture, my FPV flights capture, never looks as good on YouTube as in, uh, in goggles. As you could see, I was perfectly able to fly even uh, at a very uh, low uh, altitude. Uh, just uh, uh, approximately 10 centimeters above the ground, no problem at all. So my uh, APV feed was just fine. And that's it. Uh, again, there's a link in the description. Uh, check it out to see what uh, this quadcopter actually costs. And if you have questions, hit me up a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer you. Catch you on the next video. Bye bye.